what made you guys kind of choose the animals that you're featuring in this animation? Uh, there was one of our, produ our producer, Greg Lessons, uh, came to us actually with the idea. He, he took his children to see a butterfly exhibition at the Los Angeles Natural History Museum and all they wanted to do was go see the snakes and the spiders. They couldn't care less about the butterflies. And he came up with this idea of making a film where the heroes are the deadly and dangerous animals. And so Australia was sort of a natural fit because um, Australia's, you know, famous for having some of the cutest animals like koalas but it's also very famous for having the deadliest and most um, poisonous animals in the world uh, most of which are very gentle little creatures like Maddie the taipan snake is some of the deadliest venom in the world there's not one recorded death from a taipan because they're extremely shy gentle animals very very misunderstood so that's where the idea came from it was definitely the the cutest nemesis that I've ever seen in a movie <laughs> that was very well yeah. I love yeah. how it kind of pushed kids to to maybe look at how uh, perception versus reality or first impressions versus reality um, might be a little bit different and it's something to question. Is that something you thought about um, thinking about kids watching this movie? Yeah, definitely. It was really, you know, the core of the, the message is that, you know, you don't judge a book by its cover. That, you know, it's what is on the inside is the most important thing and and also you know who, who your family is who you travel with uh is who your family is and where home is so there was a lot of those core messages that uh we felt very strongly about and we felt like these animals that uh are totally misunderstood um do get to evolve and you know blossom as we go mm. through the journey yeah it's also embracing you know it's not being scared of other people's differences or, um, you know, it's really about embracing the fact that we are all different and being proud of the thing that makes us different. You know, Maddie, this snake is told at the beginning, she should be ashamed of herself because of the way she looks. And she comes to understand throughout the journey that, you know, this is something to be proud of. This is a strength. It's sort of, so it's really hopefully sending out a message to kids, you know, love who you are and take the time to get to know other people for who they really are as well, not just how they present on the surface. So Chaz Hunt uh, gives me mega Steve Irwin vibes. So <laughs> I'd love for you to describe the character for me. Well, Chaz looks like Steve Irwin, but Steve Irwin is a hero of mine. I grew up in Australia. He is one of the nicest people, was unfortunately one of the loveliest people. And his work with animals was genuinely about a, a genuine love of animals and respect for them. Chaz Hunt is none of those things. He may wear the tight shorts, but he is not Steve Irwin. He is a bully and he, it, you discover later in the film where it comes from, but he's trying to do his best as a dad, as a single dad to raise this son, but he's a guy who's constantly giving out the wrong messages and clinging to these old ideals that you gotta be tough. You gotta hit the other guy before he hits you. You know, these are, are things. So the relationship with Chaz and his son, we wanted to, say you know the message here is these lessons start at home you know about tolerance and about seeing beyond the exterior and so Chaz as a character does evolve throughout the movie I know you've only seen the beginning and he does learn a lot of these lessons as he goes on this journey with his son but when he starts off he's this posturing guy who would love to be that outback legend but mm. That's um, he's not quite. Both of them, both of them evolve. I mean, all our characters do. So it's yeah. as as it goes through. I mean, he feels he has to bolster himself up to be this glorified image of yeah. an outback legend. But I think, um, not to give anything away, I think when you have, I have a son. Harry has sons. When you have children, they kind of put you in the present of what's actually going on with you. And uh, yeah. so um, th their relationship is really fun to watch throughout the movie. Yeah. Yeah, they were, it was cool writing them. I enjoyed them. And, you know, and the way you and do... Eric uh, as well. Oh, Eric's fantastic. Eric, yeah. He just Eric's brought fantastic. that character to life. He was great. Yeah. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's Chaz. He does, he wants to do right by his kid, but he does all the wrong things. So one of my, my next question is about the voice talent and understanding the process of what comes first, the character, the voice, the character that gets morphed into the voice, like what's your process of taking uh, which piece of this per first? Well, the first thing we did was we had all of the animals in our office. That was our kind of first thing. 
Uh, we had, Harry had written a great script and we had all of these photographs. So um, our character designer, you know, we talked a lot about building the, you know, the, the character of each of these animals. And we used a lot of the animals qualities to, you know, to build a character like Frank and the spider. Spiders are known for their mating dances, you know, uh, Maddie with her fangs, we wanted, we talked about her being um, someone who has braces, you know, she's embarrassed by her fangs, you know, a, a teenage girl. So all of these things kind of went into the drawing of and building of the visuals. And then we would put up voices up against these visuals and say, you know, you know, like you would get, well, Jackie Weaver was kind of there from the start. We put her voice from other movies up against the Jackie the crocodile and we always loved her voice. So she was kind of a no brainer. But you'd then kind of figure out who worked up against these character images mm -hmm. as they evolved. Mm. Yeah. And I think, you know, and then once they came on board, like once we had Isla and we had Tim Minchin, you know, they bring so much that the character really starts to change and evolve from that point on. And they actually take ownership of that that role. They start offering up their own lines. You know, especially Tim, he's got his own brand of humor, you know. And um, so, you know, it becomes a collaboration then with the actor to create this, these characters. Do you have a particular scene in the movie that you think back to that you're just really proud of that particular scene and how it came out and how the message was portrayed? Yeah, I do. You haven't seen it yet, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, there's one where it sort of comes out between Maddie and Pretty Boy and they sort of get to the, they kind of, you know, that point where you're just like, all right, all stuff aside, let's just have this out now, you and I, about what, you know, how I see my life, how you see yours. It's at that moment they are forced to sort of look at each other and go, well, maybe everything isn't the way I think it is in your life. I really like that scene. That takes place in the Blue Mountains, which is a favorite location of mine because I grew up there. But that's one of mine. Claire, what would- I think for me, again, it's another scene you haven't seen. It's um, when they do get out into the outback into, uh, and they're at Uluru and it's just beautiful. Um, and they, uh, they kind of have almost got to the point where they realize that this is a friendship, they're buddies. And, um, and it's, it's, it's a really beautiful scene. Uh, it's also, it kind of embodies what we were trying to get, some of this idea of the vastness of the outback and these tiny little animals in it. Yeah. And that when you're in the outback, you know, you can, you can be any size, but you're always going to be this little tiny thing in the outback. It's a huge, yeah. vast, epic yeah. environment. So Harry, you grew up in Australia and you got to see some of these creatures on the regular, but I'm curious if yeah. when you were growing up, if you ever had like creatures or reptiles like this as pets. I didn't have them as pets because my parents were very anti, you know, keeping like, you know, things as pets like that, but you didn't have to because in both in Sydney and in my grandparents' house in the Blue Mountains, particularly the Blue Mountains, they were everywhere. And you would regularly go to sleep with those great big hairy huntsman spiders above your bed and you'd freak out, it was like, just ignore them, ignore them. I've had one in my mouth riding a horse, went over a log and a, a giant huntsman went into my mouth where there were snakes everywhere. My brothers put a snake in my bed once as a joke, a dead snake. Um, it was so, there was, it was not just knowing they were there, they were a physical members of our household. And I was horrified by all of them screamed, but I actually was like your family, I was incredibly proud of them. And particularly when I came to America, I was very proud that I knew all these animals and grown up with them. So there was a big, there was a strong friend relationship there with a lot of these guys, much more so than the koalas and the kangaroos who I didn't really care about that much at all. That's funny. I probably would have died of a heart attack by the age of five. <laughs> I know, it was pretty gross, particularly the snake. I still find them hard, but not Maddie. She's beautiful, but- uh... Yes, yeah. I think I'm connected to snakes because I grew up in Ireland where uh, apparently St. Patrick drove them all out, but I don't even know if that's true or not. It's, I don't know. So we never had snakes. So I'm, you know, it was a, it was a really exciting idea to bring, particularly uh, an animation. You, you, there's not that many snakes and a lot of questions about whether our lead should be a snake, uh, you know, because they're not as huggable. So it was a challenge for us to make the most appealing version of these animals as we could. Yeah. 
And actually, one of my favorite characters in there is, is the shark in the harbor. And the sharks terrify me too, growing up in Australia, you know, but she's such a beautiful, like, you know, you just want to wrap your arms around and hug it. That was a beautiful character design. I actually, it's one of my favorite designs in the movie, the, the way they made that shark Jacinta look. I know this movie is for, you know, for children and the family, but as like an older millennial, I really, really related to those like old unhealthy rhetorics versus the new rhetorics and those things clashing. I think that's going to be really big um, for multiple generations. Obviously, it's it's cute. It's beautiful. It's really nice to, to look at and kids will love the voices and the colors and, and the message. But I thought it was really interesting how you're you're just appealing to so many generations with this movie. I think we wanted, I mean, we wanted to make it a family adventure and, you know, uh, a road movie comedy. There was so many aspects to it. To, to give a message within a comedy is just like a lovely thing to do because I think everyone wants to laugh now and I think we're coming out of the gloom. So, and also to be on Netflix where it'll go out to a global audience and also be, be found later on as well. So it's a great all around a uh, great thing for us. Yeah, yeah. But well, that's great to hear. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can't wait to see the rest of the film. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I was an exchange student in Australia. So the box yeah. of goodies that came and like seeing everything. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, yay. Have you done the Tim Tam? You know the, the Tim Tam? Tam? Yes. Yeah. And the Reggie Mike. <laughs> Yeah, but you got to do the Tim Tam suck. You got to bite the top yeah. and the bottom off. You got to put it in a glass of warm milk and suck it. And as the milk comes up, it makes the chocolate melt and explode in your mouth. I'll have to and do it, that. Um, it's an Australian <laughs> tradition. So, <laughs> well, thank you again so much. Thanks. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.